we don't experience as often when we travel through North America and even in Australia where we're from. Because in those countries, the idea that you can have a direct communication with the gods, with all that is, with source, is a little bit odd. <laughs> the separation that we experience in the West from our connection to the divine is less than it is here in India. Because here in India, the gods came and lived amongst the men and women. They lived as part of their community and they're still very present with you as you go through your day. Whereas for many of us from Western religious or spiritual traditions, we tend to segregate and compartmentalize our spiritual life. And it's something we only experience perhaps on a Sunday when we go to church. But here in India, the very beautiful experience we keep is whether it's Hindu or Muslim, there is a connection and a knowing that the divine, that spirit, is present with us all the time. And my sister and I the other day had a beautiful experience where we went to a little local temple here, a small Balaji temple just near our hotel. And as we sat there in the evening and the chanting was being played in the temple, at the same time we could hear the call to prayer from the nearby mosque coming through the window. And it was a beautiful union of two different expressions of the same source. So what we're going to be exploring today with you as our speaks is the notion of how do we reunite human and spirit based on what Zah refers to as the universal question. And the universal question is, who do you know yourself to be? Now, at one level, that might seem a simple question. And I know when Zah first asked it of us, I thought I could right. answer then and there. But what I've learned as we've worked with it is that it's a frequency question. And it's a question that will actually never be answered in this life. Because it's the practice that brings us closer to the true knowing of who we are. And I think what we've been experiencing here in India is there is a greater knowing of your connection to the divine, that you are the divine in physical form, than perhaps we have in some other parts of the world. So you possibly have a head start with us when you start to work with the universal question. And I think it's why we've been enjoying our time here so much, because there is such a beautiful heartfelt connection to this knowing of our connectedness, of our sameness, of the divinity that unites us all. So again, as we did with yesterday, Zah will speak to us, and they always speak to us based on the energies present in the room. And they will feel the energy as they come, and you'll notice they take a little bit of time before they begin to speak, because that's actually as they're feeling the energy in the room and working out what is the best message for those souls that have come forward at this time. And they'll speak to us, and then they will guide us through a practice to help us to work with this knowing of the universal question returning us to the true magnificence that we all 
to that knowing that we feel that we are so much more than the experiences we've been having and how we can live in that blissful knowing more and more in everything that we do. So as you sit listening to Zara, listen with your ears, but also because this is a frequency conversation, it's a frequency conversation of compassion that will be communicating directly to your hearts. And that's where the true transformation begins. People experience profound changes just sitting in Zah's frequency, in their Shakti. Because sitting in that frequency begins to change us at the energetic level. Which as you all know is a much, much deeper level for transformation than anything we can even begin to do with our brains. And as I mentioned yesterday, Zah will often wish that we could chop off our heads and leave them in baskets by the door. A bit like we leave our shoes at the door and pick them up on our way out. Because when we do that, we open ourselves so much more deeply to this reconnection to, the, to our souls and to the true beauty that we are. So welcome, welcome, young ones. Mm. And so, mm. Mm. quite a frequency conversation that one. Mm. And so, mm, the universal question: Who do you know yourself to be? As it was given, it is a question in which. It is um, such an interesting experience um, to um, have a voice. Thank you. Apologies for the technical glitches. Frequency, of course, doesn't need all this technology to be transmitted, but given it is interesting to hear the teachings of Zah, it's, um, it's nice to be able to have it amplified. So let us begin again. Welcome, young ones. No, oh, you can hear so much now. The universal question, who do you know yourself to be? We have heard through his ears so many extraordinary beings describing their understanding of self, their understanding of spirituality, their understanding of connection. They are all learning to know who they are. And for these extraordinary beings, it is a journey that will continue through all their lifetimes. Their energy, their expression is something that will continue and because they are allowing it. They understand that their connection 
of their energetic self and the physical body that they have mm, used as the vehicle in this journey are a part of their expression at this time. And so from that knowing, they manifest their world and their life. You see, the universal question of who do you know yourself to be, it asks you to question who you are. What do you accept as self? Are you just a physical having to endure? Are you an energetic that feels that this physical body is not you? And so you try to escape it. <laughs> We've got news for you, young ones. You're not going anywhere. Yeah? Mm. Your energetic self, your physical body are a part of the vehicle that you are using to understand you, to learn how to live. As the divine's creation, your soul's creation in the physical. You are learning how to accept the extraordinary beauty that you were born from into this physical body that you have been within in so many different lives. In all of those you have been learning. And in all of you there is that warmth that light that allows you to recognize that there is more and so you seek the wisdom of these extraordinary beings who have been with you in these days. They feel their light, you feel your light. The light of the earth is felt by you and by the earth itself. Your expression of self. <sighs> is felt throughout all of this universe. Oh. And the ones beyond. You see, there is no separation. The only separation is only in your own expression of self. That is why the universal question is there. Who do you know yourself to be? It is not, it is not a one day. It is now. Who do you know? And because you are an expression that is never caged, that is never constricted, because you were created from compassion itself, <laughs> mm. then it can never stop, you see. The beauty of you can only continue to expand. So it is time to accept you, young ones. And it is through that question, who do you know? yourself to be in this moment. It is through the answering of that question for you that you will set yourself free, that you will ride the wave of awareness that these other beings are riding, are experiencing. And they will ask themselves that question and they will never answer it and they will continue to try and they will continue to expand and to spread their extraordinary light to the many millions in which they touch. You see, the world will continue to expand because of you. Because of your beauty, acceptance, because of your worthiness. That is who you know yourself to be and that is how it will continue. You are the light that changes the world, young ones. <laughs> Zah will often speak to us about doubt, the doubt we have about who we truly are. And in a recent radio show we did, they said, are we watering our dreams with our doubts or our knowing of self? And it's the doubt that we experience as physical beings that is one of the greatest obstacles to us allowing ourselves to really open to the magnificence that we are. And the doubt, the way we all know we experience doubt is we feel this inner knowing of this warmth, of this connection, of this magnificence that we are. And then we look at what's happening in our world and in our life and there's something that doesn't always quite match. There's a disconnect. What we're experiencing in our outer world is not always the reflection of who we know ourselves to be within us. 
And of course, what we often do in this physical three-dimensional world is we tend to believe our eyes rather than our energetic knowing. There will be many people in our lives who will tell us that that would actually be the sensible thing to do, to look at what's happening in your world and just be sensible, get real. But when we do that, we deny the knowing that we're feeling. And so we draw ourselves further away from our true energetic expression. So Zara, I think they mentioned this yesterday, they want us to create bumper stickers for our cars that say, deny the doubt. And when we deny the doubt, we allow ourselves to drop into an experiential knowing of our true essence that is present for us regardless of what we're experiencing in our lives. And the more we stay in that frequency of knowing, then of course the more we experience that beauty, the ease, the flow, the love, the compassion in our physical world as profoundly as we feel and know it in our inner world. Hmm. Hmm. You see, your purpose on this journey is to reunite human and spirit, is to reunite your knowing of self. For many have created from this understanding, from this acceptance. And so it is your time, young ones. It is your place, it is your journey to accept your beauty. To deny any doubt that keeps you from that knowing. Because you have created the doubt in the first place, so therefore you have an opportunity cause, and because you have a mind to deny what you have just doubted of self. It's quite perfect, really. Yeah. Mm. To reunite human and spirit, to understand that you are the same as creation itself. For so many, it feels like uh, the hurdle too high to jump over. How could we be that? But you are that. You have been created from that. It is only these experiences of life that you have accepted of self that have separated you from it, young ones. You see the beautiful expression of the one who sits next to us. Oh. And she is the one of human who is accepting her. The one who talks, <laughs> allows us to talk through him. Yes, well, he has the odd struggle, but it is still beautiful to watch. <laughs> part of the journey, part of the magnificence. And so as you Zara, I'm wondering, and I don't know if this is possible, but whether we have time and the ability if people would like to ask questions, if we can get a microphone um, and people could perhaps speak to you directly in the time that we have. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? How are we going? Yeah, okay. We could do one question if there, if there is a question from the floor. Yes, we do have someone. If we can get you a microphone. Can we get a mic to them? Mm. Anything you would like to say about tomorrow? Ah, so mm. the question is anything Zara would like to say about tomorrow, mm. about the 21st of the 12th? Yeah. Mmm. Oh, young ones. Mmm. Your 2012. Mmm. <laughs> Let us begin to say this, that you are the power of 2012, not the day, not the calendar, not the culture that manifested it. You are the power. It is because of your deciding to allow yourselves to be switched on, to allow the dust, the silt that has gathered over your light to be uncovered. It is because you are allowing this moment to be a, a pivotal point in your history for change, for compassion to return to your earth. It is not the day, it is you, young ones. Hmm. Hmm. 
You bring us such joy to see your expressions light. You can be seen throughout the whole of the universe and the ones that exist beyond it. Because of you, this is why hmm, change is happening, not the day. And so at the end of that day, the 21st, then comes your 22nd and your 20. It is for you to continue. It is for you to continue to be that expression of light that you have allowed to begin. And you never stop. Because it is you who will change your earth. You do not need to doubt that. Because your beauty is stronger than any weapon, than any gun. Your beauty, your compassion, your acceptance is what will change your world. Do not give your power away, young ones. Because you are the power. And so we welcome you. Hmm. <laughs> We welcome the change in the destiny that you are manifesting for your earth, that we see. And we welcome the extraordinary beings that are a part of this gathering, who are sharing their brilliance, their wisdom, their compassion with you. And so we will stop to allow them <laughs> their compassion to be spread. Mm, farewell, young ones. Mm, farewell. Mm -hmm. Farewell. Thank you, Sam. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to Mary Oakland and Gary Oakland. <coughs> and as you said, let's mark the new beginning and move forward.